Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to blend scalar displacements together uh, to create a sort of procedural combination of the two. So I've already set up a scene here. I've got a couple of lights and I've got a plane that's five by five. Um, now with any displacement, um, you're going to need to add a Render Man subdiv scheme to it. So you need to select your mesh, go to the attributes editor, uh, Render Man and subdiv scheme. Um, next, we're going to go to the Render Man shelf and we're just going to give it a uh, pixel surface shader. And then we're going to jump up into the Hypershade editor. So the first thing we're going to do is create our layering node. So we're going to hit tab and type in scalar and we'll get pixel displacement scalar layer. Now, as you can see, it's just a bunch of ins and outs um, and it allows you to connect a bunch of different inputs to it and then it will uh, create one output from them. And we need to run that into our displacement shader uh, shading group. Uh, to do this, we need to create a displace, a Pixar displace node. Setting tab and type in displace. So we'll run the result F into the displacement scalar and then we can delete that new shading group and run the out color into the displacement um, shader for your shading group for whatever your mesh is attached to. And next we're gonna hit tab and we're gonna type in checker. We're gonna get a checker pattern. I'm just gonna use this as my base layer. So I'm gonna run the uh, result RGB into a float, uh, two float node. So hit tab again, type in two float. And basically what this node does is it just takes any RGB value and um, it turns it into a float value. And we can just run that result F now into our displacement scalar, base layer displacement scalar. Finally, I'm just gonna also add in um, a manifold node. This is gonna be a Pixar manifold 2D. So once again, hit tab, type in manifold, hit three on that to expand it. And we're gonna run the result into the manifold of the checker. Then I'm just gonna change the scale to be two on the S and two on the T. So now our shading group has got a displacement assigned to it. If I render it now, you'll be able to see it. So it's rendering out that checkerboard as um, displacement value. So uh, in case you're just not aware, a scalar displacement is a value between zero and one, zero being black if you're using a texture input and one being white. Uh, so anything that's pure white is going to displace to the full bounds. Anything that's black is not going to displace at all. So now let's add in a new layer. So we've got our base layer there. You'll see we've also got a layer one enabled and we've got three, uh, two, three, and four also. Um, I'm going to use layer one. So that's already enabled. We're going to add in a uh, fractal. So again, to tab, type in fractal. And this has got a result F. So we can run the result F directly into your layer two displacement, uh, sorry, layer one displacement scalar. And we can also add a manifold to this if we wish. If you want to resize it um, at all. So at the moment, if we look at our displacement scalar layer node, uh, you'll see that it's got a layer operation and the current operation is add. So just keep that in mind when we have a look at this render. All right, so now you can see that the uh, fractal is creating displacement on top of our existing displacement. All right, so on each channel, we've also got a mask input. What we can do with that is use our Pixar checker and this, for this example, you can use any custom map um, that you cre created in an external program like Photoshop or whatever uh, to create a mask. And how it's gonna work is uh, any of the areas that are black are gonna be masked out so that the fractal isn't gonna act, act on them in this uh, example. So if I run the Pixar to float result F into the layer one mask, uh, and the layer one mask is for our, uh, uh, for our fractal, you'll see that the areas that aren't being displaced, which are the black areas, are now flat and they don't have that fractal being applied to them. We could actually invert that as well if you prefer the input to be the other way around. So I'll just run that result RGB into the Pixar invert node and expand that and we'll to create a to float again. Run the RGB into that and result F into the mask and then re-render. So yeah, you can see that that would be useful in a bunch of different um, scenarios if you're using very specific patterns as such. Now, obviously, because we're using a Pixar checker node, we can actually define the amount that's being displaced using the color values. So um, if we change the color value of color B to be the same color, you'll see that it's completely flat now because both are being displaced the exact same amount. 
whereas as we put it to 50% gray, uh, you'll see that it's uh, not displacing as much as it was there. So that's just a helpful tip. All right, so this is our standard displacement now. I'm gonna look at a couple of options in, with the displacement scalar layer um, options. Uh, so in the Hyper Shade Editor, just so you know where we're looking, we're looking at the layer one operations. At the moment, we've got it set to add. So essentially all that's doing is it's adding the values from layer one to the values of layer of the base layer. We can also set this to over. So that creates a composite between the two. Um, the next one is multiply which is fairly straightforward essentially it's multiplying the values of the uh, fractal times the value of the uh, checker now because the checker is one constant value this doesn't look as exciting as it might be if I was using say a Voronoi or something like that um, but for this example I'm just going to keep it as is inversely we can subtract which means that the values will be subtracted from the layer beneath as you can see whereas with multiply because the bottom layer, uh, because those areas of the checker were black, there was nothing to multiply times. Um, whereas subtract, it's still gonna subtract from that value. So creating a negative. Average is just gonna average out the two values. So softer than what you'd see with the standard displacement, obviously because we've got some fairly middling values. Minimum is just gonna give you the minimum value uh, between the layer one, which is our fractal and the base layer. and Alternatively, we've got max, which does the opposite. All right, so I've just added a little bit more geometry into the scene. And as you can see, you can assign these uh, scalar displacements to any mesh, so long as it has the uh, render man uh, subdivision, subdivision scheme to, uh, assigned to it as well. So uh, the checker is not the most exciting thing to use the scalar for, but uh, for this example, I thought it was a good way to should have sort of show what was going on. So there you can see that the checker is being applied to um, the torus, the cube, and the uh, sphere there. And uh, generally with subtype schemes, it's better to use a quad mesh rather than anything with triangles, which is why this uh, sphere over here, because of the way the top works, um, is getting a little bit jacked up. Uh, finally, I just mention also that if you're finding that the gain is too high on any of your scalar inputs, uh, any of your displacement inputs, you could just reduce the gain as well. So if I set the gain of the checker, which is the base layer, to 0.2 um, and re-render that IPR, you'll see now that the checker inputs are being basically overtaken by, this, uh, by the fractal input. So we can find a nice balance to get a little bit of each showing. Yeah, so you can see. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully uh, that was helpful to you out there. If it was, make sure you click the like button um, as it will help other people on YouTube find this video tutorial. If you want to stay up to date, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials every week like this one for products like Render Man and other CG software. Uh, if you want to stay up to date even further though, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.